Hey everybody, just a reminder, test is on Friday, which means I will collect your binders and your homework on Monday. Just a reminder, you have one class period to complete the test, so make sure that you are prepared. You don't get to stick around for your next class period. You have from the beginning of this class period until the end of the class period to finish your test. That is it. Please make sure your notes are in order, that they are in your rings, and that you have your homework and notes separated in two separate by in two separate uh, sections in your note in your binder. There's a lot of you guys, and I need to get through all of them as quickly as possible, so that will really help, and to make sure that you get all of the points that you deserve. All right, we are going to go out of order in the review, so we're going to start with number 12, which is <clears throat> uh, finding the B for the slope, or for the equation for the line of best fit. And that's one that we worked on on Tuesday and Wednesday. <clears throat> so we can, we can think of this as our input, and we can think of this as our actual output. And we can think of this as our predicted output. If the line has a slope of 2, remember we're writing the equation like y equals 2x plus b. And what we're looking for is what's the y-intercept that we can plug in that gives that line the least amount of error. <coughs> so in order to find the new equation here, we just take the input, which is our x, and substitute it into the x in this equation, so 2 times 0 is 2. And remember, each one in this column will have a plus b at the end. So 2 times 1. Oh, you know what? Gosh, I made a mistake. Look at that. Let's fix that, shall we? All right. That would be 0 plus b. You could also just leave that as b. 2 times 1 is 2 plus b. 2 times 2 is 4 plus b. And 2 times 3 is 6 plus b. So the next thing that we need to do, remember, is we need to figure out how close did we get between the actual input and the predicted output. So we need to find our error. And remember, when we do error, we take the actual output minus the predicted output. So you're distributing, you're just basically taking this column minus this column, but remember the negative has to get distributed. So 4 minus 0, negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4, and then the negative and the b here become negative b, so that's negative 4b. 2 minus 2 is 0, so we could just put a negative b here. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and when we distribute the negative to the b, we get minus b. And then 5 minus 6 is negative 1, and distribute the negative, so we get minus b. And then in order to find the b, what we have to do is we have to square all these errors. So remember, that's just taking each one of these and squaring it. And that goes back to our launch on Tuesday. So negative 4 minus b times negative 4 minus b. So first distribute the negative 4. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Negative 4 times negative b is positive 4b. Negative b times negative 4 is positive 4b. And negative b times negative b is plus b squared. Combine your like terms. So 16 plus 8b plus b squared. And when I put that up here, I'm going to flip-flop it around so that the b squared is first. So b squared plus 8b plus 16. The next one, we know that when we square anything, it becomes a positive. So negative b times negative b would just be positive b squared. And these two are the same. So whatever we get when we square this one is what we're going to get when we square this one. So really, we only have to do this one time. So negative 1 minus b times negative 1 minus b. Distribute the negative one first, so negative one times negative one is one. Negative one times negative b is positive b. And now distribute the negative b. Negative b times negative one is positive b. And negative b times negative b is positive b squared. Combine your like terms so you have one plus two b plus b 
squared. And then again, I'm going to rewrite this so that b squared plus 2b plus 1. And I'm going to rewrite it again. Even though I know these two are the same, it's the error squared for this one and for this one, so I need to make sure that I have both of them. Plus 2b plus 1. All right, I'm going to move these out of the way so that I have the room. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add each column together. So add your b squared column, add your b column, and add your constant column. So we have four b squares here. We have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 b's. And we have 16, 17, 18. Whoops, let me my b here. And remember, this is the function for a parabola. And a parabola is a u. And it has this minimum point down here. And if we can find what the minimum is, the minimum is going to be the same thing as this y-intercept up here. And if you remember the way that we find the y-intercept in a quadratic, we have a, b, and c here. So we take the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So in this case, since this is a positive 12, when we plug it in, we get negative 12 divided by 2 times a is 4. So negative 12 divided by 8 is equal to 1.5. So this is the y-intercept that we're going to plug in here. So the equation for line of slope 2 that has the least standard error is y equals 2x plus 1.5. Don't forget how to calculate the balance point is just finding the average of all the x values and finding the average of all the y values. And that tells you x bar, y bar. Next one we're going to do, this is the half sheet of paper. We're going to find a closed form definition that fits this table. So if you remember, Anytime that we need to write any kind of a function, the first thing we want to start off with is a delta. So start at the bottom and subtract your way up. So 99 minus 73 is 26. 73 minus 51 is 22. 51 minus 33 is 18. 33 minus 19 is 14. 19 minus 9 is 10. We know that this is not linear because none of the none of the numbers here are constant. So if it's not constant, that means that we have to go to a delta 2 table. And in this one, we're going to have two places missing. And again, you just start at the bottom and subtract up. 26 minus 22 is 4. 22 minus 18 is 4. 18 minus 14 is 4. 14 minus 10 is 4. So our delta 2 is 4, which means that because the constant is in the delta 2 column, it means it's a quadratic. So we can start writing our equation, f of x is equal to, we're going to have three things, and we know the degree is going to be squared, so it's going to be something x squared. And the way that we find the something in front is we take the constant in the delta 2 column, and we divide it by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. We know there's going to be something here in the middle, and that's what we have to find out. And then the last part is the f of 0 which is 9 in this case. So in order to find this right here, the first thing we need to do is we need to make our three columns. So we're going to start by making a column with 2x squared. And for this one, all we do is we take each in val x value, put it in here, and find the output. So 0 squared is 0, 0 times 2 is 0. Remember, this is one of the three extra columns. Plug the 1 in for x. 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Plug the 2 in. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Plug the 3 in. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. Plug the 4 in. 4 squared is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. Plug the 5 in. 5 squared is 25, times 2 is 50. The next column is we're subtracting this column minus this column. So it's f of x minus 2x squared. So 9 minus 0 
is 9. 19 minus 2 is 17. 33 <clears throat> minus 18, sorry, 33 minus 8 is 25. 51 minus 18 is 33. 73 minus 32 <clears throat> is 41. And 99 minus 50 is 49. And the last thing we do is we find the delta of this column. So start at the bottom, subtract your way up. And this is going to be the number that goes with the x. Since it's positive, we're going to put plus 8x. So this is the closed form definition that goes with this table. Next one we're going to do is number 10. <coughs> In order to find the difference, which would be the delta, we have to find the slope. So remember, slope is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here's a, a y2 and an x2, and here's a y1 and an x1. So we just plug these in. Remember, this is your y column. This is your x column. So negative 18 minus 4, negative 18 minus 4, over 6 minus 2. So negative 18 minus 4 is negative 22. 6 minus 2 is 4. So we get negative 5.5. So that's our delta every single time. And this one is blank down here. So in order to get from this one to this one, going this way we would add. So we would take this number plus a negative 5.5 is negative 18. So going this way, we subtract. So negative 18 minus a negative 5.5 is negative 12.5. Negative 12.5 minus a negative 5.5 is negative 7. Negative 7 minus a negative 5.5 is negative 1.5. Basically what you're doing is you're changing the sign and adding it. So above the 4 you would have 9.5 and above the 9.5 you would have 15. So if you remember back a while ago we talked about how to find something like this. So remember if we want to find the function at 1 we have 1 delta and we have to add our first, our output at zero. If we have, if we want to find the output at five, we have one, two, three, four, five deltas plus the output at zero that we have to add together. So if we want to find b of 30, all we have to do is take 30 times the delta and then add in this output at zero. Always has to be the output at zero. It can't be the output of anything else, positive or negative. So 30 times 5.5 is 165, plus 15 is 180. So B of 30, the output at 30, would be 180. Number 11, you have to find the mean absolute error, the mean squared error, and the standard error. So remember, these two are related. This is just the square root after you find this. So first thing we need to do is we need to start with a column that's y equals x plus 3. That's our predicted. So remember, all we do is take the x, put it in here, and find the answer. So 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. 4 plus 3 is 7. 5 plus 3 is 8. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 7 plus 3 is 10. To find your error, you're subtracting these two columns right here. So some of your errors might be positive, some might be negative. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1, 4 minus 4 is 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, 7 minus 6 is 1, 8 minus 7 is 1, 10 minus 8 is 2, 12 minus 9 is 3, and 13 minus 10 is 3. So remember, these words here tell you what you need to do with your error. 
So to find your absolute error, you have to find your absolute value. And remember, absolute value is just the positive. So you're taking each one of your errors and you're changing it from a negative into a positive. So it's 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3. And then you're just finding the average. So when you add all these together, you get 11. And there are eight numbers, so your average is 11 divided by 8, which is 1.375, and we can round to 1.4. This one tells us that we need to take our error and square it. And remember, any time you square something, it's going to turn into a positive. So all of these numbers, when you square, will give you positives. So negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 3 squared is 9. Okay, and again, you're just taking the average. So we know it's going to be something divided by 8. If we add all of these together, we should get 25, I believe. And so our average would be 3.125, and we can just round that to 3.1. So this is the mean absolute error. This is the mean squared error. The standard error is just the square root of this one right here. So 3.1, which is 1.768. We can round that to 1.8. Number nine is just a linear function, and we know it's linear because anytime it says complete a difference table, remember you need that delta column. Start at the bottom, subtract, subtract your way up. 23 minus 18 is 5, 18 minus 13 is 5, 13 minus 8 is 5, and 8 minus 3 is 5. Okay? So we know it's linear because our constant is in the delta column. So now all we have to do is write a closed form and a recursive. If you remember, the closed form is basically delta, or sorry, function of x is equal to delta x plus the function at zero. So here's all the information we need because our input is zero here. So f of x is equal to delta is five, and f at zero is three. There's our closed form right there. The recursive, if you remember, is the one with the curly bracket. And this is going to be our output at zero. And then down here, remember, this part is always going to be f of x minus one. And then what comes back here is the delta when x is greater than zero. So only the underlying two pieces get replaced. Everything else in this should stay the same. So the recursive for this one is f of x is equal to f of 0 is 3, when x is equal to 0. And we have the f of x minus 1, plus our delta is 5, when x is greater than 0. Thirteen is writing an equation for the best fit line. So what you would have to do initially is start by coming up with a line of best fit. And that may not be exactly on, but it's probably pretty close to where we need to be. So the first thing we need is we need a point, or sorry, we need a slope and we need a point, okay? <laughs> So I'm just going to pick a couple of points here. So I can see that it goes through this point right here, and I can see that it goes through kind of this point right here. So I'm just going to use 0, 2. You could actually even just use this one right here. That one might be a better one, actually. So if we have these two, you can see that the rise over run is just 1 over 1. So we could approximate our slope to be about 1. And our point that we could use 
we can approximate it to be about seven, six. So if we use this as our point, we would do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Here's your x and your y. Here's your m. You just replace these three pieces right here. So y minus 6 is equal to 1 times x minus 7. And then in order to get this into slope-intercept form, we just want to distribute. So y minus 6 is equal to x minus 7. Add your 6. y is equal to x minus 1. So you'll need to start off in point slope. You may or may not need to go into slope-intercept form. Make sure that you read the instructions. The last few are dealing with slopes and equations of lines. So remember that the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So x and y, x and y. So start with your y2, so negative 7 minus a negative 5. If this is negative, remember, you have to have the minus in the negative, and negative 1 minus 6. So this is going to become plus. So negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, and negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. If you have two negatives in your slope, remember that that means that your slope is positive. Do not leave it like this, and always make sure that your slope is reduced. I'm not going to go over two. Two is very similar to number one. Number three, write an equation given the slope and the y-intercept. So if you have a slope and a y-intercept, you just want to write it in y equals mx plus b form. So y equals m is negative 2, x, and then b is 4, so plus 4. That's it. You don't have to do anything else with that one. Number 4 is very similar, so I'm not going to do that one. Number 5 and number 6 are very similar, so I will do number 5. Here, if you have a slope, and a point, you're going to use point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. <clears throat> so you just substitute in y minus 4 equals 2 times x. Because this is a negative, because this is a negative, when we plug it in, it becomes a positive. So you have y minus 4 equals Distribute, distribute, so you get 2x plus 2, and then add your 4 to both sides. You get y is equal to 2x plus 6. Okay, so there's your answer for number 5. And then the last one, I'm not going to go over 6 because 6 is very similar to 5. The very last one that I'm going to do with you is number 7. And seven, you have two points. So we're still going to use the point slope form. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to calculate the slope. So remember that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <coughs> so to find our slope, <coughs> we have negative 3 minus a negative 2. And we have 1 minus 4. So these two are going to turn into addition. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So again, we have two negatives. Don't leave it as two negatives changed into a positive. So our slope is 1 third. So y minus, our y1 is, is negative 2, so this is going to become a positive 2, equals, here's our slope, and then x minus our y1 is 4. So again, distribute. So 1 third times x is 1 third x, and 1 third times negative 4 is negative 4 thirds. Remember, you multiply by the top number, so you can think of this as 4 over 1. Multiply the top numbers, multiply the bottom numbers. 
If we need to add fractions, they have to have a common denominator. So if we change this so it has a denominator of three, this would be six thirds. So we can think of this as six thirds instead of two. And so we're gonna subtract that six thirds from both sides. So y is equal to one third x minus, when we add these two together, we have a negative four and a negative six, so that's minus 10 thirds. So number eight is very similar to number seven. Reminder, you have one class period and one class period only to complete the test. If you know what you're doing, you shouldn't need more than that class period anyway. So make sure you come prepared. This video will be posted on my website. I have quite a few other videos on the website. Remember, it's Spooner Math. .com. So if you need to look up anything, go to the website, look up the videos. <clears throat> um, if you have questions before the test, you can email me. I will do what I can. I'm not guaranteeing anything. Um, videos are going to be your best bet. Good luck. I will see you guys on Monday to collect your binders and your homework. And we'll see you then. Have a good weekend.